Okay, what we have here are two shoulder holsters, okay, uh, for 1911 pistols. This one is one I actually wore when I was in the Marine Corps. I kept it when I got out. Uh, you know, my name on the back there. There's a, uh, you know, military number on the back of this here. And, yeah, <clears throat> excuse me. This is a copy of the World War II version. Now, this one came with an extra strap that, you know, th this part goes over your shoulder. And uh, there, there was another part to this that had a strap that mounted back here and wrapped all the way around to the front. And there's pictures of me that I'll insert maybe uh, when I was in the core wearing this. And you can see how it was worn. <clears throat> this one was designed just to hang over and that's it. No other extra strap. I had a leather worker make this for me. Oh, look at that. I even put my initials in it. I don't remember when. 20 years ago or so. I actually wear this whenever I'm out in the wilderness. In areas where you can you know, walk around with a weapon on where it doesn't freak people out. In some states, most states, that's more legal. And the issue with it is uh, debris and whatnot falls into the weapon. So what I always wanted to do was reproduce this holster, but extend this back piece to create a cover for it, a flap, to protect the weapon from debris falling into it. Also, th this weapon's designed to be carried uh, what they call condition one, right? So one in the chamber, the hammer back, and the thumb safety on. And if you were carrying it that way, uh, you know, I know a lot of people would be like, well, you're just hiking, you don't need that. I get it. I'm, that's a whole other discussion. I'm just saying. If you were carrying it that way and the hammer's back and debris falling in there, that's not great either. So <clears throat> I'm going to attempt to make a version of this today. Probably without the strap for now, because I have some other ideas on that. But what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take this, and I'm going to deconstruct it. I'm going to use this as a template. And that's what I'm going to get onto next here. Okay, it didn't take long to get this all opened up and all the parts taken off of it. I wanted to point out I did source these snaps here. The original military button snaps. Now these are a process. I'm going to have to practice on these, but I'll be able to deconstruct these uh, from here. You know, they got little tabs that go through that you can see that poke through the leather and wrap around. And I want to do the same construction process when I build a new one of putting this on uh, before I stitch this up, obviously. And I don't have a large snap for here, but I was thinking about not putting that leather loop on the bottom because they do snap, uh, pop off. I was thinking more about putting a grommet here where you could put like a piece of paracord through there or something. The idea for that piece, that loop here, is that would go on your web belt on, along your waistline. So when you go to draw your weapon, uh, the holster doesn't pull out on you or lift up. You know, the, it retains the, the, the holster in one spot. But I, I might come up with a different system for that. And this is all an experiment. If I don't get it right, I can always do it again. I happen to have a bunch of 9-ounce like veg tan leather down here. It's very thick. It's thicker than what this is, but we're going to give that a shot. All right, I got a decision to make here. So this veg tan, it's very thick. It, it measures out at four mil thick. The holster is three. And this uh, water buffalo stuff I have is also three. The thing about this is that it's, it's more supple. I don't know that that matters so much. This stuff's real, real stiff. This would be good for water molding on some things, but again, it's so thick. I'm just learning this uh, as I go here. This really is for these two knives I've got. So that's a genuine World War II case double X, and that is a Western W49, I think. So that's from 66, 67. This is from like 43, 1943. And... Neither one of those have sheets. They were both war used. And 
this one somebody messed up. They polished it up. They took all the rust and, and other things off of it. So, um, but yes, yeah, so that both of those leather sheaves probably got destroyed during the war, and uh, I need to make those sheaves. Okay, so I've got this piece of cardboard here. I'm going to trace this out. I placed this back where it was sewn into place because this snap lines up with this. I'll be duplicating those contact points. And I want to be able to bring this template, trace it up around here, bring it back down and around, and then trim that after the fact once I kind of fold that together and see how it's going to look. One of the other things I wanted to do was possibly put a magazine pouch on the outside of this uh, holster. So we'll see how all this turns out. I just went ahead and I drilled out this, uh, you know, the part of that snap there, pin snap, because I want to be able to mark exactly where this hole goes on this template so I know. All right, I want all the stuff to line up. The work's been done for me. All I'm doing is adding a flap to this. This is why you make templates first, right? So, boom, boom. I should have this on a tripod, but basically this won't reach now, right? Which makes sense. I should have thought that out first. Because it's going to hit here. Okay, this is really good because what it makes me think is I'm probably going to want to sew an extra reinforcement piece right here. Uh, either on the outside or on the inside <clears throat> so that that doesn't eventually wear through this fold. Okay, and then I obviously have to make uh, it longer so that it will reach the snap point. No problem, I got more cardboard. So I'm just gonna make a couple notes on this with dimensions and cut another template out. Well, we're getting close though. Ha, 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 ha. By the way, this Kodiak stuff is pretty stinking good. Got the swim shop on. Love watching these guys, they're just funny to me. And fun, smart guys. So hey, dive weight holds that down. And I've, everything actually shifted here, so What's really happening is, is this no longer is my point. Uh, it's going to be way over here now. You'll see in a moment when I show it to you. But i got to add some material to this side of the flap. All right, so I'm eyeballing this. Let's see how it turns out. Just want to point out that I'm growing this, right? So I cut on the outside of the line when I made that first template, and I went, I'm going to go to the outside of the line on the second one, and you can see it's getting larger than sheath. I'm doing that on purpose because I decided to go with the four mil veg tan because that's thicker. If I would have cut it to the exact size of this, I think things would have been too tight. Just trying to think ahead. All right, so we're very close here. Uh, I think I'm going to trim a little bit off this curve. All right, it's a little excess material we don't need. Uh, I might bring uh, where you see the hammer there. I might bring that up a little higher there on the front side. And then i got to make this a little bit longer here, I think, just to make sure. Because I always trim it back after the fact. And although I'm making this larger everywhere, I don't need it larger across the bottom. So I'll have to tighten that up a hair. And, uh, yeah, we're getting pretty stinking close to having this template ready. I think we got it. We got to mark where the snaps go and the slot. Yeah, this will be good. All right, I think I'm going to be able to make this work. I might be able to make it work without cutting the slot for the trigger guard, which would be nice. Now I'm going to make a decision where I'm going to put a little pouch out here for the magazine, which I think is not a bad idea. Hmm. I have to sew it over here like this. You need enough room for stitching around it, you know what I mean? 
The other thought is there's other magazines like nine mils or whatever. Sometimes you'll see them mounted out here. <clears throat> this is an interesting idea because I could probably just stitch here and wrap it and stitch on the other side and just, you know, stitch it down here and then put a catch here. And that would, I don't know, that might actually work. It would square off this edge, but you can see here, it's not like the magazine is much fatter than the end of it. I, eh, I don't know if that's a good idea or not. The only way to know for sure is to do it. These are, everything's a prototype, right? I'm leaning more towards this. So we'll see how, I might make it even without that for now and do that later. I don't have a whole lot of this leather, but uh, yeah, I think this is going to, for sure, this is going to work out fine. I gotta skive down around here in a circle to thin that up enough to get this snap to pierce all the way through. All right, so that was a lot of work. I gotta sand this a little bit more, but getting that snap to work was something. I had to skive around here to get these little pins to flap over, and uh, but it works. It'll get better, you know, as, once I oil this thing. So I got this stitched on the back here. And the next part actually stitches to here. Now I'm considering using uh, this tubing, this nylon tubing for the strap. I had it in red. That's when I used to climb. I used to do a little bouldering. I wasn't, like Dave's a real climber. I'm not a climber. But I did do a lot of bouldering and climbing walls back in the day. I got my old chalk bag. And I mean, this was overkill for that, but it's just enough. So what I can do on the back side here is take a piece of this leather and take this here and make a little patch and sew that right through and then run that as the shoulder strap. And the reason I want to do the uh, nylon is it's going to hold up longer and better than the leather that was there before on the old ones, like, uh, like this one here, this reproduction of World War II. So... I didn't put this cut in there, and uh, yeah, and you can see this is how this one was done here. This was just sewn directly to it, so I'm mimicking that. You can see I kind of mimic this. Um, if I want to, I can do this here. I could put a D-ring there and, and do all that, but I think I'm just going to sew it directly to this. And then I'll make a leather uh, shoulder pad, right, for the strap. But what I'll do is I'll do very similar to this, but on the back side, I will line it with the calfskin like I typically do. And uh, so it'll look a little bit different, but it'll be cool. And then what I'll probably do is I'll make some sort of leather patch uh, for this to mount to, right? That'll slide on this and I'll probably put a couple grommets in it and then I'll figure out a way or snaps or something so that it slides over and snaps into place on the strap so it can't go up and down. This is going to get much darker uh, once I put the oil on it. It'll probably look something like this. And I know people are going to goof on me about the red thread, but I just figured, you know, who cares? You know, it's my sheath. So you guys understand what's going on here, I think, right? So when it's raining or you're just walking through the woods, you end up with a situation where debris is just falling onto the into the into the weapon, and now that all just falls right off. Of course, this is open here. There's not much I could do about it. Once I put this together, I did have to trim more of this away because, as you can see, the sight was catching. Before I had it where the sight was sliding inside the sheath, but I got this so tight here it wouldn't work anymore. So the sight was getting caught and was pushing the slide back. 
So, you know, this was just kind of a, a first time. I can make notes on it for the next time. I can make this part here a little bit bigger. Um, this won't cover the 10 round magazine. Oopsie, I'm just dropping everything tonight. It's been one of those nights here. So a 10 round mag, uh, you can see what that does there. And then I'm gonna, I've got my logo. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna burn my logo into this, the Mike Z Design logo right there. That'll look cool. And I did not put the, I was gonna put, uh, where is it here? I know I got another magazine around here somewhere. I just had them sitting here. Oh, here we go. So I was thinking about putting a magazine pouch on this and I thought, well, let me, let me make this now. It wasn't super crazy to make this. So what I'll do is I'll make another one at some point and I'll give this a shot. You know, I wanted to fit this first. I wanted to really see how well this would turn out. And now that I know it's going to work, I think there's enough room on here for me to possibly mount that on there. So what I'm going to do some wet forming of that leather. And I don't want to do... That's the other thing. I don't really have... A veg tan that's thinner than this keep in mind this is four mil thick so that's a full millimeter thicker than the than the ones that they uh the way these are originally intended to be designed to work so it's extra heavy duty um, it does take a long time to do this i will just tell you that's all hand stitched i did a kooky little fun thing here in this corner little extra reinforcement there on purpose, that little triangle. That's That would be a weak point right there. I went over a couple times here. And I think that's a pretty neat job, though. You know, first time ever doing it. Once I put the oil, I might put the weapon in uh, plastic, you know, wrap, wrap in cellophane or something, oil the hell out of this sheath, and then uh, close it up and leave it there uh, for a bit. Matter of fact, you can do that with water too, by the way. You can just saturate this with water, wrap some uh, plastic wrap around the pistol, stick it in there, and let it kind of wet form that way. But I think I'm going to try it with the oil. There will, well, I'll just leave it at that. I'm not going to give you any news here. But anyhow, I'm pretty pleased with this. Pretty stoked with that. What do you think? Too kooky? Not a good idea? I think it's a good idea. And my next thing is I got a 357 Magnum that I also want to make one of these for. So obviously it would be smaller. It's a snub nose uh, Smith and Wesson uh, Performance Center pistol. Some of you have seen it before, and I want to do this because I also have a lever action 357. So with both them with the ability to fire 38 or 357 rounds, I think it'd be neat to have a shoulder holster there, maybe with some little pouches for speed loaders and possibly a bandolier built into it i don't know and i think that would be a nice combination to walk around uh you know if you, you can hunt wild boar with that and just about anything else 357 uh, will take it down just about anything so um yeah i mean for a first time giving it a shot you know i think it came out pretty good this was left over from a dog collar i bought to do a watch band so Anyhow, that's where you're seeing it now. Uh, I don't know if this will be the end of the video. I don't know. I think it might be for now. And then I'll show you another one. I don't know what I'm going to do. If you're looking at this now and it's the end of the video, I hope you dig it. And uh, if this video keeps going, like they often do, that means uh, <laughs> I decided to wait till it was done. <laughs> yeah. All right, so I just decided to oil this up now. Um, driving to Arizona tomorrow morning, probably back Monday night, possibly Tuesday. Uh, I got to deliver that table. So I'm going to leave the 1911 in this over that time. I'm going to make a decision as to whether or not I want to stitch this on or do another D-ring. I just want to think about it. No point in rushing it. And I think I could still burn the logo in this, even though it's been oiled. I don't think it'll be a problem. I think I could still tune this up and burnish this edge. I just want to get the oil on it now, and I wanted to just get this video out to you guys um, because, you know, um, there's not going to be a Sunday night chat this week uh, because I'll be going out of town. 
So this is it. And I know this is not the sort of thing that you guys usually get from me, but uh, hopefully you'll dig on it. And that's it. So enjoy your weekend. Uh, enjoy a Sunday without me. You know, I, I'm, you know, I can't do it every week. I'll just end up spoiling you. So you guys have a great weekend. And uh, thanks for being here. Remember to be good to one another. And hey, man, make stuff. Make cool stuff. You can do this too. This is not beyond you. Trust me, it's not. Uh, bye.